Isn't being a fat girl fun? Let's discuss. Welcome back. Um, today I thought I would tackle something that is probably one of my most asked questions, which is how do you find your personal style and also how are you so confident? Which is always a very loaded and difficult question to answer when people ask me like how I gained self-confidence because it almost feels like there should be a quick answer like, oh, I went to CVS and I got my bottled confidence and then I just like put it on my face as face cream and would, would you know, overnight, I, I bloomed. That was so stupid. I hope that makes sense, but it's just kind of hard to explain to people succinctly how you grew as a person and like came into yourself and like realized like, oh, I have self-worth actually. Like, wow, I am a human being that deserves to be treated with respect and human decency. Like, that, that's crazy. I think in order to tell you all how I found my style and subsequently the confidence to wear it, I really need to give you, like, a Jess history lesson. Just, like, a quick Jess 101 and go through my style evolution. It all began during my childhood, um, which is when I first experienced my first years of life. Because I was a child. I was born and raised in the subtropical hellscape of Miami, Florida. So if that tells you anything and everything you need to know about why I had no confidence growing up, it's that. It's that. There's different beauty standards everywhere. Um, a lot of them are kind of similar, but in Miami, the beauty standard was very much like tall, thin, but muscular, tan, like big boobs, big butt, like tiny waist like everything that I did not have I mean I'm tall but I didn't have the rest of it so growing up was very interesting <laughs> I was one of the few fat people in my school um none of my friends were fat I never wore the clothes I liked because they just didn't really come in my size like I think a lot of people like even now today there's not a ton of great plus size options like yes there's a lot of options but a lot of them aren't good but that did not exist in the same extent um all the way back in the olden days in like 2010 that stuff didn't really exist so like I didn't have a lot of options I've talked about this in previous videos but I mostly shopped at like forever 21 um and that was basically it forever 21 and there was a lot of skinny jeans and cardigans and cold shoulder tops that doesn't mean i had the confidence to wear them like i mostly wore skinny jeans a flowy top because of course like my most insecure like area in my body was my stomach and i also was scared to show my arms so even if it was like summer in miami um with humidity it probably felt like 110 degrees outside like I don't care like I would be wearing a cardigan those pieces were just my safety blanket and I think a part of me thought that if I covered up like the areas of my body that I didn't like which was basically all of it that I could somehow trick other people into thinking I was skinny <laughs> which obviously didn't work because I wasn't skinny but like I think that's just how, like, a traumatized and insecure, like, 12-year-old mind works. It's like, oh, if I, like, if they can't, like, see my skin, then they'll just, they'll think I'm skinny. <laughs> so you think I'm skinny? And I'm not even making fun of my younger self. Like, I think that's pretty valid thinking for a 12-year-old. Like, I was very insecure um, I was, like, the only fat kid I knew. Um, all my friends were all so thin. Um, I just didn't really have anyone to relate to. Like, I didn't have anyone really to look up to, to, like, be friends with. Like, anyone that, like, understood what I was going through and, like, how I felt. And so I think a lot of that just lended to me being like, I'm going to wear skinny jeans and sweatshirts in, like, 90 degree weather. Like, I just couldn't really bring myself to wear much else. I feel like this is bringing the vibes down and I might be scaring the hoes, so let's fast forward a little bit. To set the scene for you all, it was 2013, I was 15 years old, and I really wanted to be a beauty guru. Like, I did not really, um, how do you say, have the talent to be showing other people how to do their makeup, but 
I had a dream and a camera nonetheless. It honestly never gained a lot of traction, but that's how I met one of my closest friends that I have today. And I do think that it slowly helped me get out of my shell because eventually when I realized that like, I actually wasn't that good at makeup. I started switching over to fashion and I started posting some outfits on Instagram. And that's actually how I found the plus size community. Like I did not know that was a thing that existed and it was crazy to me. And this, at this time, like there weren't like influencers, like there weren't influencers or content creators in the same way that we have today like there was plus size bloggers like they were blogging like i'm talking gabby fresh nadia abu hassan like just the ogs and so i would follow them and i'd be like this is crazy like these are plus size women who were older than me and were confident and were wearing these outfits that i was so scared to wear and I was just really inspired by that because I had never seen that before in my life. And so that was like the point when I was like 15 to like probably 17 when I was like, I want to do this. Like I want to help like other people uh, see outfits like on a fat person and like just realize that they can wear that too. Because that was such a like mind opening and like just insane moment for me because I just, I I realized that you can like be plus size and wear good outfits and like wear what you want and feel good and exist in the world and like you don't need to lose weight in order to enjoy your life. I'm trying to do math in my head. Okay, so this is probably around like 2015 to 2016 because I was like 17, 18. Um, I, my style wasn't very good. I think like maybe for the time it was like, okay, I think like a lot of people don't remember how kind of like not great 2017 fashion was, but I definitely did not really have like a sense of self because this was like the time that like Instagram influencers were getting more popular and it was just really hard to like constantly see all these different like people and styles, um, on my phone and like I don't know I just feel like I was very overwhelmed and confused and I was also young like I was only like 17 or 18 years old so like obviously I didn't really have a sense of self but I definitely did not know what I wanted to my style to be and so like even if on Instagram I was posting these cute outfits in my personal life I was just wearing like once again leggings and a sweatshirt because I mean, this was around the time that I was a freshman in college and like that's what everybody else was wearing. Like everybody else, I, I went to college in the Midwest, so everybody else was wearing like leggings, North Face jackets, like school hoodies, um, Uggs, not really Uggs, I don't know, just boots, shoes, sneakers, um, beanies. And so in order for me to fit in in this new environment like I felt like I had to dress like them because I had never lived in the Midwest before I moved to the Midwest for college and I was just like I shouldn't dress how I want I should just try to assimilate and dress like them even though I wasn't them and like still didn't really look like them honestly I would say from about 2017 to maybe like the end of 2018 like I never really wore anything that I felt represented me like yes on Instagram I'd be posting these cute outfits and that would just be for Instagram like I would put on the outfit take photos um, and then take them off and just put on like I don't know leggings and a sweatshirt because that was like the time when I was like a freshman slash sophomore in college and I had moved from um, the south to the midwest and it was just very different And especially being, like, a fat girl, I was like, I don't know what to wear um, that makes me comfortable. And I was also too scared to, like, stand out in any way because my college campus was very, like, wearing leggings and boots and puffer jackets and beanies and sororities and Greek life and stuff like that, which is fine in its own way, but, like, I just couldn't relate to it and so like I think it intimidated me and so I was like okay I need to fit in and assimilate so that way like I don't know I can maybe make friends and just fit in as much as possible. It was not a great time for my mental health or my fashion health. 
my style or the stuff that I wanted to wear during this time that I was posting on Instagram was very bright, like kind of kid core, very like 2010s, does 2000s, lots of bright colors, like checkerboard print and graphics. I do just want to give a quick content warning for discussions of eating disorders, weight loss, and grief. So if you're uncomfortable with any of these topics, please skip to the timestamp on the screen. My style in 2019 and 2020 was really weird because by like 2019, I had lost a lot of weight because a close family member died suddenly in like mid-2018. And um, I just think it like messed me up mentally a lot more than I wanted to admit and so I dealt with that by developing orthorexia. I was like oh I need to eat as healthy as possible and so I exercised a lot and restricted what I ate a lot and so then that resulted in weight loss which was really a weird time because I really did not feel like myself and at the same time that was like the most praise for my appearance I had ever gotten. Like, people that I hadn't talked to in years were, like, asking me how I lost weight. Um, People were telling me how good I looked, how amazing I looked, and people just constantly asking me for, like, weight loss advice. And I was like, I don't know. Like, I had an eating disorder and I was dealing with a lot of grief and I was just very, like, depressed and I don't know. It's like that. It's just it's just a stereotypical thing is like when you lose a lot of weight as a result of something like horrible that's happened to you and people just think like, oh, weight loss is a good thing. And so let me just constantly compliment it and bring it up. And it was just a really weird time for me. Um, I had no sense of self. I did not feel like myself. I was like, oh, I was plus size my entire life, basically. And then now I'm not. And I just didn't know who I was. And um, I also had to find an entirely new wardrobe because nothing I had fit me anymore. So that was a weird time. Um, I thrifted a lot of my clothes. Um, I felt very like grungy, but also with like a mix of kind of like Phoebe buffet. I don't even know if I'm being 100% accurate with that. I'm going to be real with you all. I've never really watched Friends. Anyway, um, let's move on to 2021 to 2022. This was like after the initial rise of TikTok in 2020, but I think I still put a lot of pressure on myself to stand out and have more funky outfits, which was good in a way because I think this was a form of style experimentation, but it was also me feeling like pressure to stand out. And I don't really like talking negatively about like my past styles or my past outfits because at one point in time, like a version of me did like them and did enjoy them. Um, But I just don't think that most of the things I wore really felt like me. It just was kind of this combination of like fashion trends mixed with like Pinterest outfits I liked mixed with what I thought like I should be wearing, not really like what I liked wearing. I feel like this is taking too long. Okay, let's fast forward to 2023. Um, in 2023, um, I think I just felt really stuck in my style for most of the year. Like I felt really frustrated and just was at this point of like, why can't I just realize what I like? Like, why can't I just know what I like? I just couldn't understand why my brain like couldn't figure that out I'm like if anybody should know what I like it's me and then I and then I and then I kind of figured it out I think the issue is is that the answer was a lot simpler than I thought it would be so like it didn't seem like it was the right answer if that makes sense but really like I like more simple outfits like I like wearing all black I like buckles and chunky silver accessories I like you know fur Um, and I think what really helped me was just accepting that my style, like, isn't definable. Like, I don't like sticking to one aesthetic, and I really don't believe that that's what fashion's about anyways. And this is kind of, like, moving into one of my biggest pieces of fashion advice, which is stop trying to fit your personal style into one specific aesthetic. My fashion is all over the place. Like, some days I want to wear all black and dress more minimalist with some, like, 
elevated pieces. Some days I want to dress very feminine with like skirts and dresses. Other days I want to dress more 60s or 70s or 80s inspired. Like it just depends on how I feel. I think something that helps a lot in fashion and figuring out your style is to stop limiting yourself and trying to put yourself in a box. By the way, I am not saying that if you have like one specific style that that's wrong in any way. I'm just also saying that if you like multiple styles, that's also okay. Ultimately, it's up to you and what you enjoy and like it's okay if other people don't enjoy what you're wearing because you do. It's on your body. You are the one wearing it. Okay, I get it. I know that this is the reason why some of you are here. It's so you can know how I figured out my style. So let's get into it. Obviously, Pinterest and mood boards. Um, I do think that saving outfits you like or even just like photos that inspire you. Like I have a runway board on my Pinterest where I just put like old runway outfits and I really do genuinely enjoy that because it creates a good base for like what I want my style to be. But then you can also pull from like funky elements. Like if you're looking at like a Betsy Johnson runway and they're striped tights, like you can take that element out and be like, I enjoy striped tights. Like I'm going to wear this, but in a way that I want to wear it. And I just think that viewing fashion as an art form and a way of self-expression really does help open up your mind a bit when it comes to figuring out your style because rather than just viewing clothing as something that's like practical or utilitarian um, you're viewing it as art and I think that inherently opens up your mind and makes you think of styling pieces in ways that you wouldn't normally style them style them I don't know why I said that like that I think I might be a little thirsty a little just a, just a tad dehydrated. My next piece of advice is a big one that a lot of people say, but I do think it is like a lot harder to do in practice, and that's ignore fashion trends. Editing Jess here because I just want to clarify my wording. I don't mean that you should never participate in a trend or follow any trends. Like that's just unrealistic and kind of impossible. Like everything is influenced by something. And like it's fine if you want to implement certain trends into your style or you like certain trends. I'm just saying that I don't think your entire personal style or like what you like to wear should be based around trends because we all know that like trends are constantly changing all the time and everything is in and simultaneously out and it would just be very overwhelming and I just feel like if your wardrobe is dependent on what's trendy and what's in style then it'll just make it kind of impossible to feel like you have a sense of self. I basically just don't think that your entire wardrobe should be dependent on what's trendy but that it's fine to participate in trends or like trends and want to try them. Okay, I guess you can't completely ignore them. And I do think it's fine to take like light inspiration from trends. Like some of them are fun. There's certain pieces that you might like, like, you know, you might like bows. Bows have been very trendy and I think that's fine. Like I'm not anti bows or anything like ribbon in your hair. It's great. I love a ribbon in your hair moment. Um, but I mostly just mean like, don't let what's trendy define your style because as we all know the trend cycle is constantly changing it's moving at an accelerated and unprecedented pace and if you let the trend cycle or what's trendy define your style then your style will constantly be changing you will constantly be buying new clothes and you will never really have like a true sense of self because your wardrobe like won't even represent who you are as a person. Like this is kind of random, but I really do believe in taking inspiration from the media you consume. But watching the anime Nana really did make me realize that my personal style is kind of a combination of Nana's and Hachi's style. Like Nana's style is very grunge, very punk. Like she wears a lot of Vivian Westwood pieces. So a lot of plaid, black, leather, chunky boots. And then Hachi's style is a lot lighter and feminine and she wears a lot of skirts and dresses, but it's still kind of funky and there's like ruffles and lace and a lot of 
60s inspired elements. My style isn't 100% identical to either of them, but my point is that you can find inspiration for your style in media beyond Pinterest and social media. Look at the movies, TV shows, books, video games, magazines, etc. that you like. Look at the outfits, look at the people, look at the characters, look at just anything that makes you feel something. I felt a lot of pressure from social media to constantly be wearing something unique and different, but I actually realized that I really do enjoy something that is a lot more basic or monochrome with some elevating pieces like a belt or a cool bag or a fun jacket and shoes, eyeglasses, etc. The power of accessorizing is real and also I'm very sorry if you hear that very loud truck outside my window right now. Sorry, Loaf just woke up from a nap and she's being very cute and needy. So if you see me rubbing something in the corner, it is her, okay? Being a single mom who works too hard and loves her kids and never stops is a full-time job. I literally had to pull up a stool next to my chair that Loaf could lay on and enjoy her rubs on. So if you're wondering what's happening, that's the situation. Moving on to my next point, which I know is going to be really difficult for a lot of you to hear. I know, okay, I went through the same thing. Stop over thrifting and also just over buying in general. Listen, I'm also a thrifting girly, okay? And I know it sounds extra hypocritical because I just posted a thrift with me video. Okay, I love the thrill of the hunt. Finding a cool piece for a really cheap price gives you a serotonin rush like it literally does and that's why it's so easy to over thrift and just get addicted to thrifting constantly thrifting or buying clothes in general just makes it so you constantly have a flow of clothes into your closet which just overwhelms your brain and your closet and your wallet and i'm not trying to shame anyone okay like if this applies to you i don't want you to like feel upset i don't want uh people to be beating themselves up but rather just like rethink your behavior and think about why you're over thrifting or why you're buying so many clothes constantly and how you can work to change that. And I'm guilty of this too, okay? I'm not pretending that I've never done this. I have also been guilty of over thrifting. There was a period of my life where I would go thrifting three or four times a week. Now it's down to about maybe like once a month. Like I really don't go to the thrift store that often, but I do think that's also because I live in New Jersey now. And the thrifting just isn't really that great anymore. So I just don't even bother, which honestly has helped my wallet and my wardrobe. You heard it from me first, guys. If you're having an over thrifting issue, just move across the country. More realistically and also just better on your wallet, moving is very expensive, um, you also don't need a new outfit for every occasion or event you go to. Yeah, I'm sorry. Like, you actually don't need to buy a new dress or a new top or new shoes um, if you have an event to go to. You can actually look to your own closet, and I think that will make you appreciate your style and your wardrobe more. If you have an event to go to and you're like, I have nothing in my closet to wear, um... I want you to like actually look at your wardrobe and like dissect why you think that is because I think a lot of us are like, I have nothing to wear and it's really just because we bought so many like clothes we don't actually like or like trends we don't truly like. So when we open our closet, it doesn't feel like it represents us. So then we just automatically think like, oh my God, I have all these clothes, but I have literally nothing to wear. Rather than buying a new dress or a new outfit, I think it's really important to look to your existing wardrobe and figuring out something cool that represents you and what you want to convey is not only more friendly to your wallet and the planet, but it'll make you feel better in the long run because you're not constantly like having a new flow of clothes into your closet. And I will say as someone who definitely had a thrifting addiction and has been thrifting a lot less is that the less you thrift or buy new clothes, the more picky you will become with what you put in your wardrobe. When I was constantly buying new clothes, I would try on something that I thought was kind of cute and I would just buy it because I was like, well, it fits me and like it looks good on me, um, even though I didn't really genuinely enjoy it that much. Versus now, like, I'll try on something, and even if it fits well, I can kind of, like, use a more critical mind and be like, 
I don't actually think that I will wear this often at all, so there's no point in me buying it. Similarly, this is a very obvious reminder, but it is actually okay to rewear your clothes and even outfits that you enjoy. And in fact, it's normal because that is what your wardrobe is for. I used to also completely ignore the power of accessorizing and just accessories in general because I thought that they were a waste of money and time because I was like, well, if I have a cute outfit, like it'll just be cute enough on its own. Like, why do I need accessories to make it look better? Um, but I really do think that having accessories you genuinely like, like belts, purses, jewelry, scarves, hats, beanies, glasses, whatever, you name it, um, really is important because it's such a good way to elevate or completely change an outfit. I think accessorizing in general is really important. Like for instance, speaking of accessorizing, I forgot to put on my rings today and I feel very naked. And I think that having pieces that, you know, like you feel a connection to versus um, things that you're buying just to buy also helps a lot. Like my rings, mostly like my boyfriend has gotten them for me. And so I really enjoy wearing them every day because when I look at them, they remind me of him. And I'm not saying that like all of you need to go find a boyfriend or like have your significant other like gift you something. But I think just having accessories with more meaning or intention behind them can really make the accessorizing process more fun. I really hope that was coherent and made sense. Oh no, I disappeared and turned into a cat that likes stealing seats, apparently. I got up for a second and Miss Loaf already took my seat. But it's okay, actually. You can have it, Queen. You stay there. It's the Jess and Loaf show now. See, I told you all that you'd see Loaf in the next video. <laughs> And I did not lie, she is everywhere all the time. The next advice I have for you is going to be so obvious that you are gonna be like, why did I even click on this video? Jess, I've heard it a million times, I get it. But it really is important to invest in good staple pieces. Yes, you heard me, good staple pieces. I always felt like I had nothing to wear. I always thought the idea of investing in good basics and staples was dumb. I was like, why would I do that? Because I really wanted pieces that were just very unique and different and I thought that's what my entire wardrobe should be made up of but let me tell you that investing in good basics has literally changed my life for the better who knew that investing in staples you like actually made your life easier and uh increased the quality of life you would have yes I'm reading the list I made because I have memory issues okay jeans Basic tops like a black long sleeve shirt or a black tank top, leather jacket, a good fitted jacket. For me, that's like a denim esque jacket I have. I don't know. I'll show you a photo. I can't explain it. Um, a black dress, a pleated midi skirt, etc. Because obviously, this would depend on like what you enjoy, but I think like jeans and like basic long sleeves or like tank tops and like nice jackets like apply to everyone basically. I really did used to fall into the trap of thinking that basics were too boring and that I couldn't have basics because I wanted my wardrobe to be really interesting and unique and I wanted all my pieces to be different and just kind of one of a kind and I thought that having basics or staples would like lessen my style somehow but if anything they've only increased it. Oh my god, I have loaf hair all over my face. I don't know if you guys can see it floating on the screen, but they're like glued to my nose right now and I can't function as a human being. I'm sorry. Anyways, my point is, is that you can have those eye-catching and unique pieces while also having staples that help you build a foundation for your outfit that you can then add those cool elements to. My face is so itchy, loaf, your hair goes everywhere. And I know, okay, I know before somebody says that you should brush her more. I know, I do brush her, but she just has so much fur. And every time I pet her, it like sticks to my face. And I feel like I'm going to have an allergy attack. But she's my baby sweet potato angel muffin, and I love her. One of the most common hate comments I get is, that outfit is so unflattering, or you should dress more flattering. 
But I really don't give a fuck is the thing. I know a lot of people in these types of videos like, oh, how to find your personal style always mention dressing for your body type or how to figure out like what's flattering for your body. But I really just do not believe in any of that. Groundbreaking, revolutionary, I know. To me, flattering is just kind of code for wear what highlights the smallest part of your body, which is typically your waist and hides the larger parts of your bodies, which is usually your arms, your stomach, and your thighs. And I really just do not fuck with that. Like, I'm a big believer in wearing what makes you feel good and comfortable. And if that includes not showing your stomach, cool. If that does include showing your stomach, also cool. Do you? And I think that's a really big misconception I get when I post videos or outfits of me showing off my stomach or my arms or something is that people think that means that like they need to also be doing that when that's not what any of my platforms are about. Like it's not me telling you what you should be wearing. It's me wearing what I want to wear and telling you that if you want to wear something or something similar that you can also do that. I'm never like telling you guys, I'm never like holding you at knife point telling you that you need to freaking wear low rise or something. I think a lot of people want so badly to put fat people in this box of being unfashionable or having this expectation that if you're fat, then you have to cover up and shield other people from your body. And a lot of people hate it that more and more fat people have been refusing to do that. Like anybody that knows me knows that I show off my stomach a lot and that's partially because I like to. And then the other part of it is that I want to help normalize body types that you never see represented in media anywhere. I want to show other people that you don't have to look one specific way to wear the outfits you enjoy. And I want to show that to myself too. I just refuse to hide my body for the sake of other people and for the sake of what's flattering for my body type. Like it's fine if you're someone who wants to dress for your body type. I'm not saying you can't do that, but I'm just saying my own personal fashion ethos is that I don't care about flattering. And I just won't be, like, adhering to, like, what's flattering for my body type ever. Um, a lot of people really wish I would. And I just, I just don't care. I'm sorry. I just really don't. I've done a lot of talking throughout this video and I am now finally getting to what is also one of my most asked questions, which is how are you so confident and how do I find that confidence for myself? One of my biggest tips is finding community. And for a lot of us more and more now that is happening on the internet. So diversify that feed, like find people with similar body types to you, find people who are larger than you, find people who just make you feel good when they post. Try to find friends that build you up, make mutuals with people whose style and message you like. Like literally most of my closest friends are people that I've met through YouTube or Instagram or TikTok. Obviously this whole video is just me speaking from my experience, but as a fat person, one of the best things I've done in life is make friends with other fat people. I love my childhood friends, okay? I, I still talk to them to this day. They're amazing. But growing up as the only fat person in your friend group is a really isolating experience. And I just always felt like I never really had someone to relate to or somebody who truly understood what I was feeling and what I was going through. But becoming an adult and becoming friends with more fat people is just such a good feeling because like one you have people to share clothes with. So like you have technically multiple wardrobes, but you don't have to spend any money or use any of your own personal space. Two, you have friends who have similar experiences to you and like can understand what you're going through, what you're feeling. And it just really helps with feeling less lonely. Do not Do listen not, not to listen miserable, miserable people. people. A lot of people always ask me, how are you so confident even with all the hate comments you get? And it's honestly just because I refuse to let miserable, hateful people tell me what I should wear or what I should do with my body or how I should live my life. When you're confident in your body and with yourself in general, there will always be 
be people who do not like it. Like, no matter what you do, no matter what you look like, like, you could be Bella Hadid, and there will be people who hate you and don't like you and want you to know it because they don't want you to feel good in yourself, ever. Just remember that no matter what you do or what you look like, there will always be people who have their criticisms, and they will always find something that they perceive as wrong about you. But you don't have to listen to them. Crazy, I know. But this is, as cheesy as it sounds, your one life and your one body. So rather than letting other people dictate what you do with your one life or how you dress your one body, you can spend that time and energy doing what makes you feel good and wearing what makes you feel good. That also isn't to say that like hate comments never get to me because despite the rumors, I am a human being with feelings and emotions. I am a cancer son after all, so some days I am more sensitive and I do let the mean comments get to me and I cry about it because I'm a person with a brain and feelings. Um, and other days not so much like I just don't care and so the point of that is is that it's okay to be upset by something that someone says to you but just don't dwell on it for too long feel the emotion then release it and remind yourself of the bad bitch you are I know there's also this whole faking it till you make it thing and I know a lot of people say this but when I was younger I definitely pretended to be more confident than I was Um, Because I thought that it would make me like myself more, and it kind of did. I'm not saying this method will work for everyone. I'm just saying what I did personally as, like, a teenager and in my 20s was kind of just faking confidence. Because I do think that the more you learn to project confidence in a sense of self, the more second nature it becomes to you. Kind of related, and I know a lot of people will not want to hear this, but I do think that like there's just something about aging that makes you more confident. Because then you're kind of like, fuck it, like I'm 25. Why do I care what other people think, you know? I do just want to say that 25 is not old at all. I'm just kind of saying where I'm at right now. And I only imagine that feeling will become more prominent as I get older. And for what you've all been waiting for, while I've talked almost endlessly throughout this whole video, my final tip. Start gradual and be kind to yourself. You don't have to jump into your style right away by wearing mini dresses and heels and whatever else might make you feel uncomfortable. If your style is more feminine, you can start by adding bows to your hair or lace socks with your shoes. If your style is more masculine, you can start by wearing a cool blazer or trousers that you like. You don't need to dive in head first. You can, in fact, just dip your toe in the water and see what the temperature is like. And probably my most important and nauseatingly like sweet um, advice for this entire video is don't forget to be kind to yourself. I know, I know, this is something that's really hard to do and it's something that I also struggle with. I know, shocking, because I'm just like perfect in every way. But something that's actually been helping me a lot is journaling. I know, I was also an anti-journaling person, mostly because it felt too performative. Hold on, don't type anything, let me explain. Um, In the sense that I felt like I couldn't write in my journal without imagining somebody like reading my words and like imagining an audience that wasn't there. But I do think that just writing down my feelings really does help a lot. As someone who feels a lot of emotions but has a really hard time verbalizing them, writing them down has literally been like a savior to me. Anyways, my point is remember to be kind to yourself and to give yourself space to make errors and grow. It actually is okay to like not get everything right the first time and to not be perfect because that's just how life is. Instead of beating yourself up for it, just try being a little kinder and gentler with yourself. And that concludes Professor Jess's lesson on how to find your personal style and also the confidence to go with it. To those who stuck around to the end, thank you. Okay, I know I talked a lot in this video, but I think that's just really important. Like, I just want this to be like us discussing and vibing and talking about things that bother us because it's hard out here. It really is. And I know how hard it is 
to figure out like, okay, people say build confidence, but like, how do you actually do that? Or like, oh, just wear your personal style, but how do I actually do that? Like, it's a lot and I get it and that's why I'm here. Once again, thank you all for watching and if you enjoyed this video, please consider thumbsing up and subscribing so me and Loaf can afford to live and wreak havoc. And we will see you all in my next video. Bye. Thank you.